Let's talk about AFMF2. Right, AFMF2 came to the Ally X like a month or two ago. I did a video on like how to use it and a load of comparisons between like with it on, with it off, with upscalers enabled and all this kind of stuff to show you what it could do essentially. But I keep seeing comments, Facebook groups and stuff like that of people just not really understanding how to use it, when to use it, and what to do. So I wanna go through all of this stuff today and hopefully help you. And if you know even more than I do, please help the rest of us and the community down in the comments. Do my job for me. So let's talk about what it is. Well, it's a software frame generation. So it's going to take frames and artificially add frames in between the first frame and the next frame to make it have more frames to smooth it out essentially. But because this is a software side, not a like a hardware based or even a software based one implemented by developers, it's going to be running like over the game. So what you need to do is make sure that you're only using this if the game doesn't already have built in frame generation. So let's take Spider-Man Miles Morales, just because I've played that recently and I know that has AMD frame generation built into the game. So the devs have gone, this works, made it work, right? So you don't, you don't need AFMF2 for those games, right? If you go to the settings, and there is frame generation there, like AMD frame generation, for example, you don't need to use AFMF2. AFMF2 is purely for games that don't support it. That's why in my tutorial video, I use Resident Evil 4 Remake, because there is no like native, if you will, frame generation inside that. So we were using AFMF2 to, to help us out and give us some extra performance. So rule of thumb is no frame gen in the game, then use AFMF2. But what if the game's got frame gen already? Can't we put frame gen on top of frame gen? Well, you could, but you're gonna introduce a load of latency and a load of visual artifacts, so don't do it. It's just a no-no, just, just don't do it. Other things I see pop up is, well, AFMF2 is not working in my game. Why, why is it Why is it not working in my game? Like, it seems to work for everyone else. What about this game? What about that game? Well, AMD have actually disabled it from working in certain games that they know it's going to not work well with. Example, Forza Horizon 5, is it? Or 4? One of those. They've just disabled it from working if you're playing that game. What about game settings? Well, in terms of game settings, the only thing you really need to do is either have it in full screen, which is how I play, or borderless full screen. That is what AMD recommend for AFMF2 to work. And also disable VSync. And whilst we're talking about game settings, this is not magic, okay? So you're not gonna be able to take a game running at 15 FPS and make it run at 30 FPS and actually be decently playable. You need to have a stable base rate first, right? So when this first came out, everyone was saying like, oh, well, it's not very good. And it's like, well, you need to have a solid foundation first, right? So they, they recommend like 45 FPS. You can easily use it on 30 FPS titles to get it to 60, but it just still feels like 30 FPS. So the kind of rule of thumb here from my testing is that whatever the number says from AFMF2's frame generation, it's actually still playing or feeling like the, the base raw output of frames, right? So if you're playing at 30 F FPS, it's still gonna feel like 30 FPS, it's just gonna look smoother. That's the only way I can really describe it. So getting a stable 45 FPS first is like ideal, right? If you could get a, the game to 60 FPS first, then even better. Whether that's, you know, dropping the resolution down to 720p on some games, you know, or maybe dropping the settings down so you're playing on medium or low and 720p, something like that. Get a stable base rate first. You don't want a major like fluctuation going from 15 FPS to 50 because it's going to be choppy. You want a real nice stable like 45, let's say, and that will take it up to let's say 90 FPS and then it's going to feel and look really good because it will feel like 40 F 45 FPS, but it will look like 90 FPS. Now, one thing I really like about AFMF2 is the reduction in latency, 10 to 30% less latency than AFMF1, which I personally didn't like. I found AFMF1 was just too, there's too much latency. You could feel it, you could see it, like it was horrible. You press a button, you had to wait for it to like happen, right? It wasn't very nice. Whereas with AFMF2, it's much better. Now, We'll talk about the overlay in a minute, but once you've set the overlay up correctly, it actually tells you in milliseconds the latency. And you might see that for some reason you've got a high latency, but you've seen your friend with a lower latency, whatever, right? Or maybe you've tried a different game and you've got a lower latency. 
that's all down to the base frame rate. The higher the base frame rate, the less latency there is because that's just how frames work, right? If you're playing a game at 120 FPS native, that's going to have less latency because there's so many frames coming out versus like 30 FPS, there's more latency in between each frames, right? It takes longer for each frame to, to come on screen. So there's more time between your input. So the higher the base frame rate that you can get it, the lower the latency. So if you could get that base game at 60 FPS, right? it's going to give you less latency than if you were playing a base game at 30 and trying to get 60 with Air from F2. Does that make sense? And on that subject, in the AMD Adrenaline software, when you enable Air from F2, it automatically puts on anti-lag, which is going to try and help the latency there. But Andy, everyone says Air from F2's got stuttering and whatever. Yes, there is a bug currently, and I found, as well as other people, that just disabling the AMD overlay has helped that. I've not been having stuttering myself once you get that out of the way, because loads of people want to leave it up so they can stare at the number, right? But the whole point of this is to help us play games. So essentially, once you've got your base frame rate, let's say to 45, which is what I was saying earlier, and you've enabled frame gen, you can see that frame gen is working on the AMD overlay and you're happy with the latency like amount that it's showing, well then back out, go to the AMD software and turn off the overlay, go back into the game. We know it's working, we've just seen it, right? So it's all working as it should, you're just now not staring at the graph in the corner, right? And now you won't get stuttering, and now you can just enjoy your game knowing that, yes, it's running quite well, and you know, that you're happy. Now you can play the game and stop worrying about numbers. So there's a couple of other things, let's jump down to the ally just here. So what you wanna do is go to the AMD software, AMD Adrenaline software, right? And you wanna go up to your settings in the corner, you wanna to go to preferences, right? And then enable in-game overlay. And that is how we're going to see the actual like amount, right? So that is what we need to do. If we go over to gaming, you do have a general amount. If we go to graphics, this is like an, an overarching thing that will just apply to everything. But I don't like doing this, you know? So, I mean, I've got it ticked right now because I've been messing around with it, but I, I like turning it off. I always have, AMD RIS sharpening on, because I find it makes 720p gaming actually playable on this, right? But I actually turn off AFMF2 on everything, and what I do is go into specific games, right? So let's just take, uh, because I've been messing around with it a lot, Resident Evil 4, right? Now you might have seen that the FPS was really low, that's because I've been playing with something different over the top, but whatever. So what we wanna do here is go and click on, okay, AFMF2, yep. That is then going to enable Radeon anti-lag, right? Now you can see I've actually enabled these away from the default. So instead of auto, I've chosen high, and then from performance, as well, instead of auto, I've chosen performance. So these are the two modes that you can tinker with. You've got search mode or performance mode. Now search mode, right, it actually says for high, high is recommended for gaming at a resolution of 1440p or, or above, however, this can be enabled at lower reses to improve smoothness. This has been another reason why people have been getting stuttering. So if they've been using standard, or if you put it on auto, it will default to standard, that can cause stuttering. So put it on high, right? And then performance mode, is essentially performance is recommended for integrated GPUs, which is we've got uh, an, an APU here with an iGPU inside it. So we want it on poo, poo mode? No, <laughs> we want it on performance mode. <laughs> We're not enabling switch mode, don't worry. Okay, uh, so uh, anti-lag is going to reduce input lag. So it's gonna help with the latency. I always have RIS on. So now I've made it, so Resident Evil 4, always has this, right? When I launch Resident Evil 4, it's going to have this up. Now, if I go to performance over here, I can click on overlay and enable metrics overlay, enable game detection for metrics, right? And this is going to show me my actual upscaled FPS, right? Now, what you can do is also go into Armory Crate and do it this way, but I've still not found it actually works. So I, I, don't, I don't know, like, Asus are like, oh, you know, have a AMD Adrenaline running in the background, which mine always is. Mine's like on 
at launch, right, at startup, but this just doesn't seem to work. But basically, if you take Resident Evil 4 example here, press X, go to set game profile, and go down to GPU settings, right, I've got this. Now it has actually paired up, so maybe they fixed it. I don't think this has been updated since I last tested it, but okay. But you can select, you know, upscaling there or AFMF, and obviously you want one or the other really. So you've got AFMF 2 on with Radeon anti lag on, and I've also got RIS enabled here. So here it is actually working. You can do it per game this way as well but I would definitely do it in the adrenaline software, then this should, should just update to reflect that. But yeah, I don't really trust this side of it because I've definitely had it not working in the past. Whereas if I go through the AMD software, it does work. It's the same with the command center. I find these don't actually do anything. Even when I've got AMD software running in the background, they, they might say like, yeah, it's on. But if I turn it off here, it definitely doesn't even turn it off. Even with RIS, it used to, like when, when the Ally first came out, these used to work. I don't know why they're, they're not working for me now. So if you know a fix, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to know because this would be really handy. But the feature's there, it just doesn't work for me. Talking about features, Asus <laughs> did a uh, like a, an update recently, right? And they've made it so that you can use their overlay. So if we go up to the top, I've got real-time monitor off, right? And obviously we can enable that to minimum or maximum or whatever. Let's just back out to so, so you can see it just here. Previously, if you were using AFMF2 or 1, right, and you loaded a game, this used to throw up an error. So like I'd see it mainly online with people having this like um like overlay up and it would have a little exclamation mark with AFMF like on it, and it wouldn't show the FPS. And people are like, oh, what's happening? It's because the overlay didn't support it. Asus have now enabled support. And whilst they say like, yeah, you can see it in our monitor, it only shows you the base frame rate. It doesn't show you the AFMF2 frame generation frame rate, right? So you won't actually see the true number there. Or, or maybe that's the other way around. Maybe you see the true number because that's the real amount of frames, but you don't see the fake frames added on top, right? But yeah, that, that is basically all my tips for, for how to use this correctly. Go back and watch through the video if you're having an issue and check out my previous video where I actually go through and I test in game what it's doing, how it's working, my thoughts on how it's feeling and everything else. It's a really cool bit of software for a device like this, which obviously will get outdated over time, right? Like it, in like a couple of years or whatever, it will start showing its age. But with technologies like frame generation, we can certainly give more longevity to it. Or even right now, we can turn down settings, turn down the amount of power we're outputting and use these fake downloaded frames. Just download more frames, man, you know, and get more life or more battery life out of it. It's, it's wicked technology. It's really, really cool. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know your tips. I'd love to know them, even if they're just random ally tips. Let me know down in the comments be below before what am i talking about i don't know subscribe to the channel like this video become a member and you can see these videos early chat to me and aj over on our private discord and talking of aj check out his news videos and our podcast that we host together here on this channel and i'll see you in the next one bye